very good morning and a warm welcome to St. James. I'm pleased to say I'm COVID negative this morning, so don't panic. Uh, it's been an interesting week. It's a joy that you're here. Um, please do stay after the service for refreshments next door in the parish centre. We turn to the green service card to worship together. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Turning to the reverse of the newsletter, you'll find the Collect and Bible readings for today, the 20th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. God, the giver of life, whose Holy Spirit wells up within your church, by the Spirit's gifts equip us to live the gospel of Christ and make us eager to do your will, that we may share with the whole creation the joys of eternal life. <coughs> through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. <coughs> Acts 
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place for your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When the chief priests and the Pharisees had heard the parables, they realised that Jesus was speaking about them. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test? You hypocrites, show me the coin used for tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, the emperor's. Then he said to them, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
May my words serve to further God's kingdom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. The news at the moment is depressing, with lots of things demanding our prayers. The massacre of Jews by terrorists, who then use innocent Palestinians as human shields. The invasion of Ukraine, sundry floods, earthquakes and fires, etc. But the fact that you have to put up with listening to me standing here today, talking rather than Father Damien, is a reminder that it is not just these catastrophic events that we need to consider, but we also have to think about things closer to home. Everyone here will have, at some point, had to worry about someone close to them. You only have to look at the intercession list to see this. And that is only the ones whom we have written down today. Our prayers go out for Father Damien and his family, as well as for all the others we know who need help. Now, today's epistle is generally accepted as having been one of the earliest and written by Paul himself, probably less than 20 years after Jesus' death. It is set out in a very formal way, as you would expect from an educated person. <clears throat> it seems that he has been unable to return to Thessalonica, having been forced out by rioting Jews who detested that he corrupted Judaism. Nevertheless, he had made converts of both Jews and Gentiles whilst there, but they are now coming under pressure. Paul had sent Timothy to see how things were going and this letter is his response. It is not sure whether this is physical threats or social pressures. Thessalonica was a great centre of both Roman and Greek trade, so the majority of its inhabitants would have been pagans, as well as a significant Jewish community. And this was still some centuries before Rome adopted Christianity. So it's still very much a minority religion with no state or military backing. Its spread by word of mouth was itself miraculous and testament to the fervour of its members. Paul starts by assuring them of his prayers, a reminder to us that we need to remember the persecuted in our prayers. He then goes on to talk about how their resilience in the face of persecution guided, of course, by the Holy Spirit, has allowed their steadfastness to be an example to congregations in other parts of Greece and beyond. In this country, despite what the papers say about the police trying to restrict Christians, we are still able to praise God and speak to him via prayer, both privately and usually publicly. There are many countries in the world where the persecution of Christians is at least as bad as it was in the Roman Empire. So we must pray for them and try and give them a light to hold on to. As the old saying goes, if you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? In many countries, this is no joke. Moving on to the Gospel today, this is actually one of the fun parts of the Bible. One can almost imagine it as being part of a slapstick show. The Pharisees, the religious authorities, and the secular Jewish authorities, the Herodians, are trying to get this troublesome preacher out of the way. They've spent hours trying to think of a way to entrap him and think they have found the perfect way. If he answers yes, they can portray him as a collaborator and destroy his support. Whilst an answer of no will label him as an insurrectionist, whom the Romans will want to destroy. And of course, to not answer at all will show that he is not the great rabbi his supporters claim him to be. If he can't even answer a simple question, perfect although they are not confident enough to send anyone senior, 
preferring us instead to send their disciples. It gives plausible deniability. Jesus, of course, does not fall for this. One could just imagine the scene in the temple. There are all the fancily dressed priests and this group of rough Galileans. Jesus looks in his pouch or pocket. Job has no money. Probably turns around. Simon, you've got a coin. Then when it is obvious that none of his people have any money, he turns to the priests and asks them. They rapidly produce one. Jesus has probably already, already won over the crowd by then, but rubs it in by asking, whose is this image? Now, there were copper Jewish coins, but they chose the rather more valuable Roman denarius, worth a full day's pay for a workman. Now, it is not just that they have more wealth than anyone else, but also that the coin they had was strictly against Torah, the Jewish law. That strictly forbids graven images. But here is a coin with the graven image of Caesar and in the temple precincts to boot. To make it even worse, the most likely inscription is Tiberius Caesar, August son of the divine Augustus, high priest. This shows that they totally ignored all the rules that they were so strict about everyone else following. Jesus wasn't joking when he called them hypocrites. When Jesus tells them to give to the emperor that, that which is the emperor's, he actually uses a word which can be translated as give back to or return. He isn't saying give anything new, rather simply return that which first came from the emperor and likewise return that which came from God to God. Jesus is basically saying, obey the laws of man and pay your dues, but remember that all life comes from God and must be returned to him in due course. There is, of course, one very simple but vital lesson to be learnt from this. Do not try to double guess God. If you do, the best you can hope for is to be made to look like a fool. Jesus doesn't have to penalize people here. They realize how stupid they have been and slink away. In conclusion, today's readings say that one must give back to God everything that comes from him, primarily ourselves. This does not say everyone go out and become a martyr. What it does say is go and ask God what he wants from you. Then go and do it. You can serve God by being an example for others in your belief and prayer. Amen. we stand to declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end.
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world and thank God for his goodness. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Generous God, we must worship you, we must weary you in our inability to live peaceably with one another. Today we pray for the people of Israel, Gaza and the West Bank. We pray for the future of the Holy Land. We pray for those who weep, who fear and for those who will die this day. By your great mercy, defend your children from all perils and dangers of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us thank God, our Father, for the blessings of our country and for the freedom which we enjoy. We pray for our King and his family and for those who govern in his name. Give them health and strength, wisdom and courage, so they may carry out their responsibilities in the best interests of all people. And let those who have power remember that they are your servants and that your son came to serve and not to be served. We pray for Archbishop Justin and for Bishop Andrew. We thank God for the life and ministry of the Venerable Paul Breyer, Archdeacon of Dorking, who died earlier this month. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Korea. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of Father Damien. Help him to be strong in his vocation. Grant him the wisdom, understanding, and strength he needs to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and help him to become an instrument of your divine grace. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land and the riches of the sea and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for your gracious providing, may we cherish and respect this planet and all its peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Caring God, we read in the Gospel today how the chief priests and Pharisees tried to entrap Jesus by questioning him on the payment of tax. Dear Lord, keep us mindful of our blessings and our duty to share. Teach us to be generous, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We remember in our prayers all of those in acute name, need, named in our parish newsletter. Fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, we will face many frightening events throughout this life, but may we never forget that the ultimate victory is through you. By your sacrifice, death has been defeated. As we continue to walk in your truth, help us to set our eyes on you and our minds 
on your divine peace and grace. In the year's mind, we remember Edward G. Purdy, Eileen Key, Alan Gilding, John Cave Priest, Christine Beach, Alice Bellerby, and Freddie Savile. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're able, please stand for the peace. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
be present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. This we ask in your holy and wonderful name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world, and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. So we gladly, with, gladly thank you with saints and angels for ever praising you and singing. Holy We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes again in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ has come. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St James and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honour be yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom in the words our Saviour Christ gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. God, our Father, whose Son, the light unfailing, has come from heaven to deliver the world from the darkness of ignorance. Let these holy mysteries open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the way of life and walk in it without stumbling. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Sue, would you like to go first? Right, good morning, everyone. It's just about the, the winter prize draw, okay? I'll be selling tickets in the hall afterwards, okay? And you can return any ticket stub money to me. Adam will be at the back of the church. You can collect more tickets from him. So remember, the more tickets we sell, the warmer the church will be, okay? So, okay, thank you. Well, thank you. There you go. The more tickets we sell, the better. Look, I'm going to talk a little bit about finance for just one minute through my croak. Uh, it's very manly, isn't it? Very manly. Because you might have noticed the heating's on. And we've had contractors in and they've serviced Beverly, our old boiler downstairs, and she's got more front than Woolworths had. She's enormous. And they've hoovered out the existing radiators and they've kept it going for a little bit longer. But in order for it to feel warm like this in the depths of winter, we're going to have to run our heating system and spend some money. Now, I also know that not everyone in our congregation at the moment has signed up to the parish giving scheme. Information is on here. I'd like to share with you three brief thoughts about why that's a very good idea. The first is we don't all get to church every Sunday. And that means if we're giving in the traditional way of putting money in the basket or in a bag or putting it in an envelope, which is great and thank you and appreciated, if we're not here, we're not doing that. The parish giving scheme enables us to give whether or not we attend regularly at church. So if you get COVID or another cold or flu or something, I hope you don't, but if you do in the winter and you can't get to church and you watch online, if you're in the parish giving scheme, you're still giving to support the church and actually paying for the costs of providing online services and all the extra things and making sure everyone in church is nice and warm who's still here, which will help prevent the spread of all the bugs and the viruses. Because we want to keep our church warm. So joining the parish giving scheme enables you to give even when you're not here. That's the first thing. The second thing that's great about the parish giving scheme is that actually it can, if you allow it to, increase your giving every year just a little bit in line with costs. Now if we honestly have a think, just for a moment about your giving to the church, have you put that up in the last few years? Because I suspect a lot of us are still giving the same amount of money as we gave before COVID, say five years ago. And actually our costs have more than doubled in that time. So it's just worth thinking about, by joining the parish giving scheme and increasing our giving a little bit, and then signing up to allow it to increase every year gently, actually we can then solve that problem and then I wouldn't need to stand up and talk about giving because our giving would all automatically go up and that would be fantastic. So that's the second benefit. The third benefit of the parish giving scheme is that actually we are paying for the running of it already. Because the parish giving scheme comes from the Church of England and is paid for partly by our parish share, the money we give every year into the central pot. Now that money enables me to be here. It will be paying for a curate. We're hoping to interview someone shortly, which is very exciting. It pays for Father Brian's pension and lots of other things to bishops and all sorts of apparently useful people. So that has to be paid on top of our costs. 
Now, the parish giving scheme is paid for through that parish share, and it includes collecting gift aid. Now, the parish giving scheme, therefore, is an efficient way of giving money. Because if you opt in to gift aid, if you pay tax on your pension or your income, if you opt in to gift aid through the parish giving scheme, they do all the work for us. We've actually already paid them to do it by paying the parish share. That means we reduce our operating costs a little bit and are more efficient here in the parish. So there's another benefit of the parish giving scheme. And of course, by gift aiding your donation, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, lucky you, if you are, then that's even more efficient to use the parish giving scheme. And there are benefits to you in the tax system too. So there are so many reasons why it makes sense to join the parish giving scheme. If you'd like to know more about it, you can ask Alan, our fantastic treasurer. You can ask Gretchen at the back of church, ask Jill, church warden, talk to me about it. Maybe not today, but another time. There are packs available at the back of church. There's information on our website, on our Facebook page, and on the newsletter. It would make a massive difference if we could move so many of us from envelopes to the parish giving scheme. Does that make sense? And thank you so much for your generosity, your commitment, your faithfulness, which has meant we could get contractors in to give our heating system a boost because you've already given us money to enable us to do that. So thank you. And let's see if we can stay nice and warm this winter. Does that sound like a plan? I really appreciated being warm this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Now, this week is half term week for those of us with children at school, which means both myself and Nikki in the office are taking a break. So there won't be a parish office open this week. In an emergency, please contact one of the church wardens. Details at the top of the newsletter. This Wednesday, Canon Richard will be here at 11 o'clock, and then next Sunday he'll be here at 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock to look after you. So give him a really warm welcome, and uh, I will see you uh, for All Saints. All Souls Day traditionally follows All Saints Day. So this year at St. James, following our tradition, All Saints Day is the Wednesday, the 1st of November. We have a sung Eucharist in the evening at eight o'clock that will i think also be live streamed is that the plan would possibly be live streamed you never know watch this space uh, but we'd love you to be in church for that if you can all souls day will then be kept on the following sunday so we would love you to be part of all souls day and we've invited families who've been bereaved in the last couple of years to join us for that service if you would like the name of one of your loved ones deceased read out in church, you do need to add their name to the list which Gretchen is holding at the back of church. It's on the uh, wooden lectern. If you're watching this online and would like your loved ones' names added, you need to email into the parish office or write to the parish office. You've got plenty of time to do either. Uh, but we do need to have that. They're not automatically on that list. We renew that list every year. Um, so please do make sure names get added to that list ready for All Souls Sunday uh, in a fortnight's time. Are there any other notices for today? No, thank you. Thank you to those who've made coffee today. Let's stand and pray for God's blessing. The Lord be with you. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Sweetie. 